Principles of Design The principles of design describe the ways that art issues the elements of art in a work of art. Here are some principles of design found in arts, balance, emphasis, repetition, rhythm, proportion, movement, variety, and unity. Balance is a principle of design. A feeling of balance results when the elements of design are arranged to create the impression of equality in weight or importance. In The Last Supper by Leonardo da Vinci, the artist has used the principle of balance by creating a symmetrical composition. The background architecture of the painting is symmetrical, with the figures placed symmetrically within it. This is known as formal or symmetrical balance. The artist used balance to create a stable, confident feeling. In Absinthe by Edgar Degas, the artist achieves informal or asymmetrical balance. The painting is divided by a diagonal line. Elements placed in the top right area of the painting create a top-heavy, unsteady feeling. The artist has deliberately created an unbalanced feeling that extends to the subject, the seated woman. The feeling created is not stable and confident like the feeling created in The Last Supper. Emphasis is a principle of design. Emphasis can be defined as the special attention or importance given to one part or element in a work of art. Emphasis can be achieved through placement, contrast, size, or other methods. In The Creation of Adam by Michelangelo, the viewer's eyes move along the outstretched arms of the figures to the point where the fingers almost touch. The uncluttered background around this area ensures that the viewer's attention is strongly focused on this point, also known as a stress point. Therefore, Michelangelo has achieved emphasis through the placement of objects in his painting. In School of Athens by Raphael, the artist draws the viewer's attention to the central figures that have been placed symmetrically within the architectural features of the painting. Also, the artist has used perspective to achieve emphasis by placing the vanishing point behind these central figures. Take a look at these two portraits by Rembrandt. The artist draws the viewer's attention to the faces and hands by making these areas dramatically lighter. Everything else within the paintings seems to fall into shadow. Therefore, Rembrandt achieved emphasis through his use of contrast. Rhythm is a principle of design. Rhythm involves the repetition of elements to create the illusion of movement. Take a look at this series of trees by Piet Mondrian. In this series of paintings, the artist often focused less on the lightness of the tree and more on the repeating shapes and directions of the branches. Therefore, Piet Mondrian used the principle of rhythm. In this painting called Broadway Boogie Woogie by Piet Mondrian, the artist achieved rhythm through repeated shapes, lines and colors. This painting suggests the rhythm and movement of a busy city street. In this painting, called Nude Descending a Staircase by Marcel Duchamp, the artist uses the principle of rhythm to create a feeling of movement. Unity and harmony are principles of design. Unity is the coherence of a work of art that gives the viewer the feeling that all of the parts of the piece are working together. Achieving harmony involves the use of similar and compatible elements of design to achieve a feeling of coherence in a work of art. Many ask, what is the difference between unity and harmony? The principle of unity and the principle of harmony are very close in meaning. Both principles of design involve elements that are working together to produce one coherent work of art. The principle of unity can be compared to singers who are singing in unison. All their voices are singing the same notes and the same words to give the music a coherent feeling. Likewise, artists can achieve unity by using one element throughout a work of art. For example, an artist could use one smooth texture throughout a painting to create a coherent feeling. The principle of harmony can be compared to a group of singers who are blending their voices in harmony with musical notes that are different but compatible. For example, an artist could achieve harmony by using a family of colors that are different but compatible throughout a work of art. Look at these paintings of poplar trees by Claude Monet. 
The artist achieved unity by using strategic color throughout his artwork. The same color that is found in the sky at the top of each painting can also be found in the water or textured foreground at the bottom of each painting. A famous Impressionist painter called Georges Seurat achieved unity in his paintings by using texture. He used tiny dabs of paint known as pointillism throughout his artwork. Look at these paintings by Henri Rousseau. The artist created a coherent feeling and achieved harmony by using similar and compatible colors and shapes throughout his artwork. These are paintings by Victor Vassarelli. The artist created a coherent feeling and achieved harmony by using similar and compatible colors and shapes throughout his artwork. Movement is a principle of design. Movement is the way in which the elements of design are organized so that the viewer's eye is led through the work of art in a systematic way. In Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh, the artist directs the viewer's eye through the painting by using directional brush strokes. Therefore, the artist has achieved movement through the use of texture. Take a look at this sculpture called the Discus Thrower. Note how the viewer's eye moves along the curved limbs. This artist has achieved movement through the use of carefully placed forms. Variety is a principle of design. Achieving variety involves the use of differences or contrasts. Here are three examples of still life paintings by Paul Cézanne. In each painting, he has repeated fruits that are similar in size and shape. Note how the artist has achieved variety by changing the colors of each fruit so no two are the same. Proportion is a principle of design. Proportion may be described as the relationship between objects with respect to size and number. These proportional relationships can be used by artists to communicate ideas about strength, frailty, or equality. Sometimes there is a close relationship between mathematics and art. Artists sometimes use the golden section to determine proportions within their artwork. The golden section is known by many different names and can be described as a ratio of 1 to 1.618. The golden section proportion can be found frequently in nature from the spiral shape of a galaxy to a strand of DNA. Golden section proportion can be found in snail shells, hurricanes, pine cones, and much more. Historically, architects and artists have found inspiration from nature and mathematics and have used the golden section proportions in their work.